Hey guys, shalom, shalom. It's Jen from Ezekiel Effect Ministries and it's Friday. So I am grateful for that and grateful to be here with you. And I just wanted to read Psalm 12 to you today. It says, man's treachery and God's constancy. So already we've got a contrast here, it looks like. The chief musician on an eight stringed harp, a Psalm of David. So David is writing, help Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak idly, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. So already the Lord is talking through David about the fact that there is such uh, a contrast, there's a dichotomy here of people who are living for the Lord and people who are not and people who are trying to please the world and please men, and they're trying to flatter people. And then there's people who really want to please God. And it makes me think about the passage from James where it talks about being double-minded. It says here, with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. And people who are living for the world really are double-minded. So if we're not living for the Lord or we're not acknowledging the Lord, uh, we are being double-minded, which means that we have one foot in one side of the camp and one foot in the other side of the camp. And really we can't serve two gods. So if we're not serving the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, we are serving the world or we're serving idols in the world, which are little gods, little G gods. So. Verse three, may the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things. Verse four, who have said with our tongue, we will prevail. Our lips are our own and who is Lord over us? It, it sounds to me like this pride is really taking over that David, that's how David is interpreting it. That people's pride is getting the better of them. They're getting haughty. They're getting overconfident. They're basically just saying that we can do whatever we want. Verse five, for the oppression of the poor, for the sight, the sighing of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. So it changes, it changes a little bit here, at verse five, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy. Now I will arise, says the Lord. So even though the world is acting like they can do it all themselves, they don't need God, here, here the Lord says, I'm coming in to take, um, I'm taking control, I'm gonna help out the needy, I'm going to advocate for them. It says, I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. The Lord is swooping in, he's giving safety, he's protecting the ones who are feeling oppressed. Verse six, the words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace on earth, purified seven times. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forevermore. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. So again, David is just continuing to acknowledge that the Lord's on one side or, you know, the Lord is, if you're on the Lord's side, basically you are living one way. And if you're living on the other side, if you're living for the world, uh, there's wickedness prowling around, there's vileness, there's people who are trying to exalt themselves. I mean, let's just, I mean, let's think about what's happening right now on social media. You know, everywhere you turn around, there's people who they're putting themselves on a platform. They want, you know, attention, they want notoriety. They're trying to make money. It's kind of the look at me society. And then people, uh, there's a certain degree of a certain amount of people who are looking out for the needy and those who are oppressed. Um, but the Lord is looking out for them. They're not, the Lord is taking people down. I mean, he's already um, taking people off their throne, so to speak, their worldly throne. I mean, that's gonna continue based on what we've seen you know the Lord is not going to stand for it that's that's what he talks about in his word is he's you know he's just 
he's just going to cut off all flattering lips. It says in verse three, and the tongue that speaks proud things. So hopefully, you know, we can self-examine. And we've all done these kinds of things. I'm not going to say any of us are exempt. We're not. That's why we need to live a life of repentance and prayer and coming to the Lord with the things that we're struggling with. And when we fail, when we mess up, when we have those moments or those seasons, we need to get back to just walking in step with the Lord. And this is what David reminds us about through the Psalms. What I love so much about him is he's just really honest. He's raw. He's transparent. And he just says it like it is. So, um, you know, I feel like he's very relatable. So, and we can trust in the Lord. That's, that's for sure. We do know we can trust in the Lord because his words are pure. Like it says in verse six, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. The Lord's words are pure. So everything we find in the Bible, the word of God is pure. There's nothing purer than that. So that's the good news is that we can, we can trust in everything the Lord says. We can trust in what he advises us to do. We can make all of our decisions about our life based on what we find in the word of God. All we have to do is search and it will, it will um, be confirmed multiple times through different parts of the scripture, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We can definitely see that God confirms things that he's talking about, that he repeats himself many, many times, um, such as, you know, do not fear. He talks about that hundreds of times, for example, in the Bible. So if we, if we really need wisdom and we really want to live for the Lord, the Bible is the place to find it. So I hope that you were encouraged today and I hope that you are blessed and I hope that you have a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. And whether you're a mom or whether you're not a mom, you, you know, everyone has a mom, but I know um, just as a side note, sometimes people are, you know, just going through difficult seasons and um, maybe they're estranged or maybe their mom has died. Um, maybe they didn't have a good relationship. You know, there's lots of combinations of things that could be going on in your past or in your present. Um, so I just want to point you back to Jesus and I just want to say that he loves you. And again, his words are pure and you can find hope and comfort through Jesus, no matter what you've gone through. And certainly reading the Psalms, you can find that, that hope and comfort as well, that David has gone through very hard things. So whether you're celebrating this weekend or whether you're just grieving this weekend or doing a little bit of both, um, you can find comfort in the Psalms and we can find comfort in the Lord. So I bless you. And until next time, shalom, shalom.